Hi folks, I'm the Bald Guy, and these are Bald Guy Basics. A number of you seem quite interested in working with, we with leather. With weather? Well, the weather is chilly outside today, but that's not what we're here for. Uh, in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to form leather, and you can see there, I just made a belt loop. And I made my belt loop by stretching the leather with first with alcohol and then with water and then I shaped it with my trusty butch stick. And what I did, uh, you know, it was kind of bowed up like this. So what I did is I clamped it. I went and got me a cheap cutting board at the Family Dollar type store. And I just clamped it down so it held the front of it flush. And that made for a nice flat piece, a nice belt loop piece here. So what I want to do today is to show you uh, the possibility of making a tool here. I don't know if I want to do it with this one. I'll probably do it with this one because this one's a bit smaller. You're always needing a tape measure in so many things. Got a shadow over my face. And I am a person for whatever reason, I despise a belt clip. Um, I, I use them at times when I'm forced to. But what I'm thinking of doing since my belt would go through this horizontally is to make a pouch where I, and, and I'm, I'll probably have to cut the top off this. So what I want is a pouch I can drop this into and the top of my um, tape measure will protrude where it will be easy for me to access it. But how would you go about that? So what I've done today, let me get, I'm gonna need my butch sticks. Over here on the trusty <laughs> synthetic chamois cloth, I have a piece of leather, uh, a, a simple piece of leather that I took and dropped into a bucket of water and let it soak for about five minutes. And then I needed to go get a couple of, I hear a fire truck going up, a couple of other items. So I just, I let it soak a little longer. So I'm just getting surface water off of it right now. And what I'm going to do is to show you, and I'll cut out a lot of the, use a little time lapse, cut out a lot of the stuff, and show you how you can make leather to fit uh, a tool or something else that you might want. I've done them for knives, I've done them for other tools. First thing I'm gonna do is take off this, wrong one, take off this belt clip and show you how easy it is to form leather to your own needs. If I've not showed you before, after I feed the pet, I take and clean these out. They make great little part bowls so that you don't lose anything because I might decide that my belt clip was the best way to go. What you're going to do the first thing you're going to do, I'm going to put this thing on my side the way I want it to come up. So the side is going to come up like so. So I need to be sure and put this side down. And you simply start the process. And this is not, there's nothing easy about this process. There's nothing quick about this process. But We're gonna cheat. So what I'm going to do, what I went and got is some spring-loaded clamps. And I'm going to bring my leather to the edge of my board here. I'm gonna do it probably this way. Make sure I have plenty of leather left. Now I've got one edge firmly established. I turn my board and I want to push my, can you see that? I'm pushing my tape measure hard up against my butch stick and I'm using my stick to help me to form this. Now there are some other things I can do here. And in fact, I've got one I can show you. Some, oh, it's over here. 
this was the first one I made. It was really ugly. And I formed this by hand, so it's not very distinct. But I ran into too much material right here. You simply make a cut here. And actually, I made a cut like so, and I took out the excess material. So that is something you can do. You'll just make a, not quite a 90 degree cut there, and you can remove a lot of the material that is in your way. But what I plan to do, we're gonna push this down and I can clamp this down as well. And I've got two turns here without having to do the hard work. People who um, are better at this than I am, <laughs> there's a lot that goes into that statement, I'm sure. They will spend a lot of time taking their hands and forming this down. What I am going to do, let's see, do I want to use a razor knife? I'm just going to relieve myself of this excess material, like so. And I'm cutting right up to the edge of my And what I will end up doing then when I cut this away, this wad of material right here will be gone. So I'm actually going to do this on two sides. I've got the light kind of in front of me and I can't see what I'm doing. Blade might help. There we go. Now you really don't do want to go all the way up to this corner. Make sure I'm far enough up. I'm not far enough on this side. And I'm going to come back in a minute. I'm going to start pushing this down. What I'm going to cut away is not this flap here, which I know you can't see. Let me get this over here where you see it. See this material right here? I'm going to clamp this down. I'm going to cut that corner out on both sides, there and there, where I'm pinching up. Um, my corners don't have to be exact for this, but it's as simple as this. And once I have clamped this down, I'll do the same process over here. I'll cut my corner material out so that I can clamp this thing down firmly and then I'll let it set for 24 hours. During that 24 hours, the water will evaporate out of the leather and it will leave the leather, leather formed to fit my tape measure. And it will, and matter of fact, I'm not gonna have to do this one side. The reason why, that's gonna be the top. The top is where I'm gonna take the tool out. So I'm gonna come back and probably cut this so that I can get the edge, my fingers on the edge of the thing. So part of this is gonna be exposed. So I only have to do this one side. I'm not terribly worried about being exact. This is not a showpiece. I'm not doing this for sale. So where the leather is pressed down here, what I'm doing, I've got it clamped on the side here. I want to cut down along this side then push this side down and cut down and finally leave it to where I have I have a joint, two pieces of leather that are apart, but I'm gonna seal them. Um, I'm gonna let them dry to where they're so close that you, you don't have to worry about them falling out. This is one of those cheap utility knives. The blade is perfect. 
it works wonderfully but the problem with it is it wants to it doesn't want to hold the blade at the depth I set it to so when I put pressure on it the blade moves good pair of upholstery shears. I can make that last cut. All right, you see what I've done here. I'll hold it up to you once I clamp it. I don't have another clamp. I'll tell you what I do. Clamp it here. These clamps are worth so much. That. I'm going to release the whole thing here, and you'll see why in just a second. Notice how that's already shaped very nicely. I want my clamps all the way up against this. All the way up, so this is the side that I really want tight. Because I'm pushing it up against these others. So one clamp actually holds the whole stick on that side. And I have just enough. Do there. Now I've got some smaller clamps, so I can go and add a little extra in the right places. There we've done it. Let me get down here where you can see me. So what I'm going to do now. I'm gonna let this dry. Uh, I've got my tape measure in there. It's plastic, so the moisture's not gonna hurt it. Uh, I'll, uh, if it bothers you, I'll blow it out once I get done. But then when we're done, I'm going to take, and I'm gonna trim this so that there's not so much material above the belt loop. There'll be a glue surface here, a glue surface across the bottom, a glue surface up this side. So this form, I will take and glue it, and I'll glue it pretty securely. Uh, I use Gorilla Glue, and it has served pretty well for me. You can sew this. Uh, if you want to sew this, um, very few of you will have a leather-capable sewing machine, which um, they're handy, but unless you work leather, nobody's got these things. The thing to do, you can use just about any twine. You don't want, you want, you don't want just your wife's sewing thread, but a, a, a good twine, and I keep a roll I keep a roll of this stuff, which is a synthetic, and this, this roll has got to be, I bought this roll in 1997, if that tells you anything. So here we are 26 years later, and this stuff is still good. The thing I was telling you, though, if you're going to sew, what you should do, once you glue this in place, and then, uh, I don't know what you call them, but uh, in your wife's sewing kit, and you can buy these for six, eight dollars, there is a little, it's a, a wheel with serrations on it, and you can roll it along, and it will give you an indentation at a regular interval. Take it over to your drill press and cut your holes for sewing through both pieces of leather, and then you can, um, you can sew this without taking the old, all or ads or whatever uh, the tool is and sitting there on a um, there's a uh, <coughs> excuse me there's a like a leather leatherman saddle type thing where you're sitting there and you can put pressure on there uh, that's great if you've got one but if you pre-cut your holes you just run your twine through it and then uh, pull it tight and you're done so that would be a good way to do it so we're going to cut the video off now <coughs> dusty down here i'll come back tomorrow uh and i'll take this thing apart and show you how well that this has formed all right here we are back again um roughly 24 hours later and the only thing i've done different since you left 
since the previous video. Uh, I just came in and cut the top of this piece off. Uh, and I did that so that I would have a little bit of my tape measure sticking out and make sure that it didn't dry with it um, bending down the wrong way. And uh, just for fun, I took the piece that I trimmed off to show you how effective this drying method is. I had a piece of antler laying here and I just wrapped it around it and clipped it. And my goodness, I can't even pull it out. There we go. Now, there's no use for this thing, but you see how this thing is formed. And I mean, I really have to pull it to get it apart. So it, it really, drying it does form things very well. So all we're gonna do now, take our clips off. See how hard that is. Basically, what I'm preparing to do is I want to take my front, which is very much oversized, and I'm going to take the back, put the two things together. And the one thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to clamp it just the same way. I don't remember which way I had this thing in here. I think I had it this way. So it dropped down. What I'm going to do and I'll do this off camera. I'm going to place my back and my front together and I'm going to put a bead of um, Gorilla Glue on here. I'll put the whole thing together and then I will clamp it once more and let the Gorilla Glue die. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then we'll come back probably another day from now, give this glue time to die. And what I'll, I'll finish up by just cutting the excess, I'll, I'll go over here to my bandsaw and I will cut the excess material, uh, the excess leather off and we will go from there. All right, I'm back with you. Several hours have passed and what I have done is I came down here and checked on my glue job and my glue seemed complete. So I went ahead and completed my little pouch and, and there we have it. And what I have done, um, I trimmed off the top. I trimmed it off all the way around. I just took it over to the bandsaw, a jigsaw. You can do this with a razor knife. Just take several passes to cut through two layers of, of the leather. But I noticed that in forming this, I formed it really well, which means it's really tight. I'm having a little trouble pulling it out from the top. So I just cut me a finger hole in the bottom. You can see it there. Um, a lot of phone cases use this same technique so that you can reach down, insert a finger, and, and push it right out the top. And I can demonstrate my belt loop with my good old butch stick here. So, uh, and if this looks rough, it is. I am not an expert on leather forming. I've got a brother who is, but uh, with a few of the things that he's described, what you're seeing is me learning as I go. So I'm just sharing the learning process. Um, and again, I am a, I'm a very utilitarian guy. So this kind of thing is perfect for what I want. I can put this on, uh, as I told you before, I do not like the little metal belt clips. Uh, things are prone to pop off. And I don't like that, number one. And um, they can mess up a belt. That's number two. So here I have formed something, and I could actually go back. You can take and sand the, the leather. One of the things you'll find when you do this, the leather is now very hard. So sanding works really well, uh, but it's also very durable. And I, I was going to show you, excuse me a minute. Let me get my glue. This Gorilla Glue makes several different brands or, or types of glue. This is the original, and it's marked original, the brown glue. I love it and I don't love it. I love it because it, for me, it is the best adhesive that I've used um, without getting into some really exotic and expensive glues. Uh, it's readily available everywhere. The thing I don't like about it is 
it's a thick glue. So, and this, this bottle of glue is probably a year old and it takes it a while when I turn it up for it to drain down to where I can squeeze it. And it's really hard to squeeze out. So other than the squeezing part of it, um, it works super, super well. In fact, I'll tell you how good this Gorilla Glue is. Outside, I have a cast iron pot, uh, what commonly is referred to a wash pot, but it's the kind of pot uh, that many people use for uh, an outdoor stew. And I broke that thing years ago. So I have a, a, a pot this big around and a third of the pot is broken off. Uh, rather than throw the thing away, I thought, well, maybe I can convert it into a, a flower pot for my wife. So I took Gorilla Glue and put a bead of the Gorilla Glue all the way around and set this piece back in. And you know, when you've got a piece this big um, and a, a long perimeter, I couldn't get it all to, to match up with exact precision. There are some gaps in there. Part of it is because the rest of the thing can expand differently once it's um, broken like that. But I put this thing on and I got the tolerances within just a sliver. There's a few places where I can see a little sunlight through it. But I put this on it and it has been outside for um, probably two years now. And it is still solid. <laughs> just the other day to test its strength, I went and kicked the thing. <laughs> well, it's already broke, uh, but it was back together and that glue held perfectly. So this is really good stuff. I've glued other leather pieces in fact, where is one of them? I glued this little sheath that I made with the construction grade white glue. And when I pull on it, I actually see the glue almost stretching. I'm not going to pull on it hard enough to separate it because this has been, I've had this for a few months now and it's, it's held up well. But when I stretch on this one or pull on it it's solid it's a good solid connection so i do like that i think the construction glue is a little easier to work with uh, it's it's easier to squeeze out so you take that for what it's worth but now you've watched the methodology and um you remember i i had wide flanges here that made it easy to clip um uh, with my my spring clamps just to hold those clips on here and it works great if you need to soften it up take some baby powder some regular talc i would apply it on the insides and soften it up the uh, only thing i would do differently i told you i'm learning as i go uh earlier in the video you saw how i placed this and clamped it down tight what i would do differently is i would yes i would clamp it down but what I would do, I would take some spacers, and these are just pieces of leather. I would take some spacers, and I would, of course, cut them to width. And I would make just a little bit of a wider. I'd put one on each side and a thin one on top. And that would mean when my leather was being stretched over it, I would have a little bit of an extra gap, which would simply make it easier for this to, to be inserted and uh, extracted without quite so much friction. Uh, I may try a little baby powder, but I cut the finger hole in the bottom and it works perfectly. So that is a wonderful way for you to shape leather and to get a pretty decent result. Um, so I hope that helps. And if you do a project that you um, are proud of, send me a link to it. Uh, make a little video. I'd love to see it. I might learn something too. Uh, if you like these videos, I invite you to like on them and to even subscribe, and we'll be doing more how-to videos from around the house. I'm the Bald Guy, and these are Bald Guy Basics.